peace and power you too family um welcome back everyone um i'm hoping everyone is doing well i just wanted to share something with you that i was supposed to be sharing a while back okay so um welcome to my new subscribers welcome back to my youtube family and let's just check it out it's on blood types um this is a blood page that's it um you can go over and check it out for yourself it is theorized that your that the original blood type for early primates was type o dna retrieved from two neanderthal and the tall skeleton showed no A or B antibodies and projected the origin of type O to one million years ago. And I don't know why um, I read articles on blood type, but I do. Um, I think there's a connection. I just don't know what. Of course, the most high always leads us to stuff and then other stuff will come along. I'll link the website if I remember but um like I said here it is up here and it says that it is theorized it is theorized that the original blood type for early primates was type O DNA retrieved from two Neanderthal skeletons show no A or B um what I want to know is what this means the results however suggest the presence of the human o01 allele already in the common ancestor of neanderthals and modern humans and thereby confirming an emergence of o01 allele more than one million years ago predating the divergence of the modern human and neanderthal populations DNA from crow magnon and chimpanzee specimens. Where's my mouse? There's a mouse somewhere. Okay. So here. I asked my sister. Ah, no, no, no. No, no, Okay. Um. Okay. One moment. Um, the chimpanzee specimen showed type O and A, a mutation that proved advantageous because of some environmental challenges or infestations. Type B is an even later adaptation which is totally absent in the ape world. Most recent is type AB which came about because of interbreeding of A and B types. Now, if we look at the original type O, humans are faring in today's modern world. We can reliably say that they have done very well. Type O has the highest rate of peptic ulcers and angina pectoris, but type O has the lowest rate of pancreatic cancer, cardiac infarctions, and cardiac ischemia than the other groups. So nature got it right the first time. The peptic ulcers are caused by stomach acid that eats away the mucus coating, mostly in the eudonium, 
where the stomach empties into the intestines. It is believed that some of the damage is caused by the overproduction of stomach acids due to either stress or by the activity of a bacterium that thrives in such an environment called Heliobacter pylori. Bacterial or viral infestation might have contributed to the mutation that produced type A blood. But while type A blood is not associated with peptic ulcers, it has been linked to a plethora of diseases including type a, oh, including type A blood has been linked to a higher cancer of the hypopharnix, larynx, pancreas, stomach, breast, and testicles. Type A blood has been linked to gallstones, coronary heart disease, elevated serum, cholesterol, and overall reduction immune response caused by resistance to apoptosis. It seems that nature took one step forward and a half a dozen back but we may not have the whole story yet. The emergence of type A ironically coincides with beginning with the beginning of a vegan culture perhaps twenty thousand years ago. The date is frequently push back with little dependence on red meat or dairy products. These were nomadic people who ate a variety of nuts, grains, vegetables, and fruits. We have traditionally associated this type of diet with good health and perhaps it was back then type A health um I'm sorry associated the types of diet with good health and perhaps it was back then now type A health has suffered the most from modern dietary habits and has shown less resilience to the present day environment than type O. Type B represents a mutation that occurred about 10,000 years ago in the central mountains of Asia. This adaptation has fewer diseases associated with it than A. However, it falls short of the resilience of O. Now type B's Achilles heel is type 1 diabetes and mysteriously esophageal and gastric cancer in a particular province in China but nowhere else. Overall type B is an improvement over A but not as good as O. At least in modern times. Lastly Type B is the most recent adaptation. Now, lastly, type AB is the most re recent adaptation. Scientists placed it about a thousand years ago. Now, as you might expect, the range of disease diseases fall somewhere between A and B. Different diets for different types. And they never have a lot of information on type AB. 
Now type O, even with our relatively unhealthy diets, type O, in, individuals seem to be doing something right for them. The higher incident of ulcers and chest pains seem more stress related and that would give some credence to the psychological profiling we mentioned at the beginning of this article. And I'm gonna go back up in a minute because I don't remember reading it to y'all. The type B group is prone to type one diabetes. The current theoretical models for this type of diabetes is the destruction of insulin producing cells in the pancreas caused by some local environmental condition. It has been shown that identical twins who share some genome only share this disease 30 to 50 percent of the time. Also, migrating populations contract the disease at the same rate as their host country. A virus called Coxsackie of the rubella family is suspected. Some researchers believe the autoimmune response is influenced by antibodies against cow's milk proteins but the evidence has never been conclusive. Giving children 2000 IU of vitamin D during their first year of life is associated with reduced risk of type 1 diabetes. Though the casual or well, the causal relationship is obscure, children with antibodies to beta cell proteins, i.e., in early stages of an immune reaction to them with no overt diabetes and treated with vitamin B3 niacin had less than half the diabetes onset incidence in a seven year time span than did the general population and an even lower incident relative to those with antibodies as well, but who received no vitamin B3. So although there may be genetic component linking type B blood with type 1 diabetes, there also appears to be a more positive response to vitamin D and B3, which um B3 niacin is like a energy slash blood thinner. If you have really thick blood, you can take niacin and it'll give you energy and it helps with circulation. Like if um if your body, um, you know, some people legs go numb, their arms, whatever, whatever. Um, it all is also good <laughs> for passing drug tests. If you need to pass drug tests, you can take niacin. And I've heard that it helps. I'm not sure. I think you would have to take it a couple of days. I don't remember if I've ever had to use it, but that's what that is. Um, because it's speeding up that blood, which is typically um circulating it and you know, it causes it causes your body to clean itself overall. Um diets which in these vitamins plus sunlight exposure would appear to be beneficial as supplements to a type B diet. Now type A, you will notice that I say type A for last with propensities for an assortment of diseases affecting the heart, digestive and endocrine endocrine system this blood type seems most vulnerable to uh oh hold on 
most vulnerable to modern diets. Type A people were originally vegans or at least very or at the very least omnivores. So the obvious reason, I mean the obvious difference is that today's food is often not fresh and is processed with preservatives and other chemicals to prolong its shelf life and increase profitability. These trace amounts of unnatural substances affect all blood types, but as type A's clearly demonstrate the toxicity of prolonged exposure. Type AB this type of blood y'all yeah, excuse me I'm drinking coffee and retightening my hair um this type of blood can suffer from all of the maladies of type A now statistically most research has been conducted on types O and A and it is generally assumed that the detrimental effects are similar to A, which is not as severe. Okay, so what about the RH, which is the rhesus factor? After the ABO blood types were understood and utilized. Some fatal reactions to matched blood was still occurring. Carl Landsteiner discovered the second most important factor, which he called the rhesus factor. The genes for this antibody have been traced all the way back to early primates. The people who have this antibody are called RH positive and make up oh no, and make up about 85% of the modern human population. The remaining 15% who lack the antibody are RH negative. Now the argument is often made that people who are RH negative are a recent mutation well after both Cro-Magnon and Neanderthals have suggested that they are alien hybrids. Okay. Descendants from Atlantis or even a totally different, albeit similar species from another world. A more scientific theory is offered below. All modern genetic DNA evidence points, uh -oh, points to an out of Africa origin for humanity. Hence, it is our view that RH positive and RH the RH positive RH negative positive is the original RH blood allele in humans since black Africans in Africa who have not mixed either with white populations or with mixed race persons have only this RL allele and no evidence of RH negative I want to read that again. Y'all, if I'm reading too slow, just read it for yourselves. Um, I'm reading so so I can get a better understanding. And also, I'm um, just tired. 
All modern genetic DNA evidence points to an out of Africa origin for humanity. Hence, it is our view that RH positive, RH negative positive is the original RH blood allele in human sense. Black Africans in Africa who have not mixed with either white populations or with mixed race persons only have this RH allele and no evidence of RH negative or RH negative since RH negative which is RH negative I don't know why they got it twice is an allele which is found predominantly among white populations CA 40 or 50 percent in Europe it must clearly be a mutation which follow after man's migrations from Africa to Europe so since RH negative is an allele found predominantly among white populations 40 to 50 45 to 40 to 45 percent in Europe it must be a mutation which follow after man's migration from Africa to Europe moreover RH negative is found much more frequently among A and O blood groups which are major types in Western Europe whereas RH negative is much rarer among persons with B and AB blood types. The RH protein plays a significant role as a channel for CO2 CO2 gas carbon dioxide across cell membranes in the body. So RH proteins act as a gas channel that can help speed the transfer of carbon dioxide CO2 in and out of red blood cells. CO2 can pass through the cell membrane unaided above right but not quickly enough. Hence it will be it will seem to be a likely hypothesis to this observer. Presented here for the first time the RH negative developed due to a presumably presumably beneficial change mandated in our human breathing of the earth's air in a more north northerly European latitudes. So this would make sense. There is in fact a global air sea flux of CO2 carbon dioxide which could correspond to the mutation Hold on. to the mutation we see in RH from Africa RH positive to Western Europe okay I don't know um, what any of that means. 
Um, there's a link here, like I said, for the full article. I don't know what all that means. Um, literature suggests that people with Rh negative have higher IQs, lower blood pressure, keen eyesight and hearing, hazel or blue eyes, reddish hair, psychic abilities, cannot be cloned and will reject a fetus that is RH positive. That is, that last bit is used as an argument that RH negative individuals are actually a different species or hybrid since no other animal rejects its offspring except, except mules which are a hybrid donkey or horse. So, um, I'm going to play this video. Hold on, y'all. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, like I said, I'm tightening my hair, so I'm trying to keep my hands steady. But here's the video. Hold on. So fast. Let's just start it over. That's at fifteen percent. I just want to share this with y'all. I have no idea what it has to do with. I know um, the Most High has given this to me to think about. 
and you know usually he gives me stuff and it'll come back so maybe it'll come back hey Warner for certain there's sound there's scientific evidence undisputed that certain diseases appear more frequently in certain blood types beyond that solid observation the ethereal world of species fat diets can waste time and money youtube has many videos claiming that certain foods should or should not be consumed by various blood types usually after a brief introduction the video transforms into a sales tool for a book or CD you don't need that knowing your blood type gives you a statistical window now others of your type are dealing with the world today you can learn by this and avoid few foods that are known to contribute to these particular illnesses paying attention to any family susceptible to the environmental toxins in our food who are not evolved to eat unnatural chemicals or processed foods eat wise and I don't know if this has anything else to do. Let's see. But yeah, I just wanted to share that with y'all. And this video is going to be very short because I just want to share with y'all. Peace and power to you all. I hope that you enjoy your day. First day of the week. We're going back. Time is fine. Going back into another week. Well, not back until we're going into another week. So fast. It's like literally flying by. Alright, y'all. Um, enjoy your day. Peace and power. And I'm out.